Here's a bit of Tiwanaku. This is the piece of Tiwanaku that's called the Pumapunku. And it consists of absolutely enormous blocks of stone. This piece has been calculated to weigh 400 tons. I mean, they're just unimaginably large. I think that the city of Tiwanaku is one of the most mysterious sites in the world. Imagine a civilization capable of constructing massive stone structures with such precision that even modern engineers are left scratching their heads. Welcome to Tiwanaku and Pumapunku, ancient sites nestled near Lake Titicaca in Bolivia that continue to fuel debate and fascination. Did the Tiwanaku people possess advanced technology lost to time? Or do these enigmatic ruins hold a deeper, more mysterious secret? The handiwork of humans is clearly evident uh, in this site. Uncover the mysteries surrounding these ancient marvels and explore theories that challenge our understanding of pre-Columbian history. Are you ready to journey back in time and question everything you thought you knew about the past? Tiwanaku, once the heart of a powerful civilization that flourished over 1,500 years ago. Today, it stands as a testament to the ingenuity and skill of the Tiwanaku people, who left behind impressive ruins that continue to intrigue and mystify. God knows how anybody got it up there at 14,000 feet above sea. I could even breathe at 14,000 feet above sea level. The first Europeans to encounter Tiwanaku were Spanish conquistadors in the 16th century. They stumbled upon these monumental ruins and their accounts piqued the curiosity of the wider world. Spanish chroniclers such as Pedro Tiesa de Leon described the site's grandeur and speculated about its origins, sparking interest in this mysterious ancient civilization. It wasn't until the late 19th century that Tiwanaku became the focus of serious scientific inquiry. Ephraim George Squire, an American archaeologist, and Charles Wiener, a French explorer, both visited the site and documented its ruins in detail. Their work laid the groundwork for the first systematic archaeological excavations, which began in the late 19th and early 20th centuries. Alphonse Stubel and Max Uhler led these early excavations, meticulously unearthing the secrets of Tiwanaku's past. Ula's efforts to establish a timeline for the site were particularly significant as they provided a framework for understanding the rise and fall of this remarkable civilization. Tiwanaku is a very controversial site and archaeologists would like it not to be much more than 2,000 years old. These early explorers and archaeologists paved the way for generations of researchers to unravel the mysteries of Tiwanaku and shed light on its crucial role in South American history. The Akapana Pyramid is a standout structure at Tiwanaku, rising to a height of approximately 16 and a half meters, with a base area stretching about 200 meters by 250 meters. This large terraced mound is believed to emulate a sacred mountain, showcasing the spiritual significance it held for the Tiwanaku people. The pyramid's advanced design includes a sophisticated drainage system built to protect it from water damage and erosion. This system features a network of stone-lined channels and underground conduits that efficiently divert rainwater away, highlighting the impressive engineering skills of the builders. Constructed using a combination of large stone blocks and compacted earth, the pyramid's terraces exhibit a high level of craftsmanship, with the stone blocks precisely cut and fitted together without mortar. The Kalasaya complex is another significant feature of Tiwanaku, characterized by a large rectangular enclosure surrounded by high stone walls. Measuring approximately 130 meters by 120 meters, this complex houses the famous Gateway of the Sun. This massive monolithic archway, carved from a single block of andesite stone, stands about three meters high and four meters wide with an estimated weight of 10 tons. The Gateway of the Sun is adorned with intricate carvings depicting deities and astronomical symbols, believed to be linked to the Tewanaku calendar and cosmology. We're going to see more physical evidence for this, more as time goes by. The semi-subterranean temple at Tewanaku is an impressive sunken courtyard, 
measuring about 28 and a half meters by 26 meters. One of the most distinctive features of this temple is the collection of carved stone heads embedded in its walls. The discovery of Puma Punku, much like the main Tiwanaku site, traces back to Spanish explorers in the 16th century. However, it wasn't until the 20th century that the site began to receive significant scholarly attention through modern archaeological efforts. Systematic excavations and studies that started in the mid-20th century revealed Puma Punku's unique architectural style and mysterious construction techniques. The stonework at Puma Punku is particularly renowned for its extraordinary precision. Constructed primarily from andesite and sandstone, both known for their durability and hardness, the exact methods used to achieve such precision at Puma Punku remain a subject of debate and fascination. Several theories have been proposed to explain the stonework's complexity. One prevalent theory is that the Tiwanaku people used metal tools made from bronze or copper alloys. Although these metals can cut softer stones, the hardness of andesite presents a significant challenge. Nonetheless, evidence of bronze and copper tools at other Tiwanaku sites supports this theory, with some stones showing marks consistent with the use of chisels or other cutting tools. Another theory suggests the use of abrasive materials like sand and water to cut and shape the stones. This technique involves rubbing sand and water against the stone surface to gradually wear it down, which could explain the smooth surfaces and precise angles observed at Puma Punku. Large grinding stones may have been used to smooth and polish the stone surfaces after the initial cutting further contributing to the precise fit of the blocks. Some researchers propose that the Taiwanaku civilization possessed advanced technologies or techniques that have since been lost. This theory suggests that they might have had knowledge of sophisticated methods or tools that we do not fully understand today. There is also speculation about the potential use of chemical processes, such as plant-based acids, to soften the stone before shaping it although this theory lacks concrete evidence. A fringe theory, popularized by some alternative history proponents, suggests that extraterrestrial beings assisted the Tewanaku people in constructing Puma Punku. Some people find, think that the answer is, is extraterrestrial visitors. <laughs> I don't think that's the answer, but yeah. who knows? One of the most iconic features of Puma Punku is the presence of H-shaped blocks. These blocks are a testament to the advanced engineering and architectural skills of the Tiwanaku civilization. The H-shaped blocks interlock in a modular fashion, suggesting they were designed to fit together in a specific configuration. This modularity indicates a highly planned and sophisticated approach to construction. The H-blocks vary in size, with many being approximately one meter high and wide, with a depth of about half a meter. Each block weighs several tons, with some of the largest estimated to weigh over 10 tons. Creating these H blocks would have required advanced stone cutting techniques, and the precise angles and smooth surfaces indicate a high degree of craftsmanship, pointing to the use of advanced tools or methods. The transportation of the massive stone blocks used at Puma Punku is a captivating aspect of its construction. Some of the largest blocks weighing over 100 tons, were transported from quarries several kilometers away. One widely accepted theory is that the Tiwanaku people used wooden sleds to transport these large stone blocks. These sleds, pulled by large groups of workers or even animals, such as elephants or mammoths, could have been a method. The use of log rollers beneath the sleds could have facilitated the movement of the heavy stones with workers continuously placing logs in front of the sled as it moved forward. Given the absence of large domesticated draft animals in the region during that period, it is more likely that large teams of organized workers performed the task using simple machines like levers and inclined planes to aid in lifting and moving the stones. The Tiwanaku civilization likely mobilized a substantial labor force coordinating efforts similar to those used in other ancient construction projects, such as the building of the Egyptian pyramids. Some theories propose that Lake Titicaca, which was larger and closer to the site during the time of the Tiwanaku civilization, 
could have been used to transport the stones by rafts. This method would have involved floating the stones across the lake before moving them overland for the final leg of the journey. The precision stonework at Puma Punku is often compared to the masonry of the Egyptian pyramids, particularly the Great Pyramid of Giza. Constructed around 2580 to 2560 BCE, the Great Pyramid consists of millions of limestone blocks, some weighing up to 80 tons. The precision of the blocks and the alignment of the pyramid with celestial bodies reflect advanced engineering and architectural knowledge. Both sites indicate that these civilizations had advanced knowledge of construction techniques and tools, although the exact methods remain debated 